powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janelle Slade. Jay has the night off. At least five fires along Highway 87 north of Billings forced crews into action and shut down the highway tonight. Early this evening, columns of smoke rose above the Billings skyline as flames scorched nearly 2,000 acres of land in just a matter of hours. Now, crews attacked the flames from the ground and from the air. Q2's David Jay was on the fire lines tonight to bring us the latest. David. Well, Janelle, the uh, two big fires were at the uh, 21 uh, mile mark and also uh, marker 19, and those two fires uh, joined together to form one. They were two of the five fires believed to have sparked along Highway 87 just north of Billings this evening. Those two fires burned 1,800 acres total. No uh, word on the other fires. Uh, some of the ones uh, north of there did burn about 50 acres apiece. Yellowstone County disaster. And emergency Service Director Brad Shoemaker says the flames came close to a ranch, but no structures were damaged in any of those spots. Smoke everywhere, getting in your lungs, you know. It's just what you do for neighbors, though. When we got out here, we didn't realize the extent of the fire. Um, I came in, I attacked the, this, we're calling this the southern edge. I attacked the southern edge, and um, Jeff Brown took, took over the coordination for the fire, firefighting effort on the northern edge. And I didn't, we just got done doing a 360 around it, and the two fires have joined, joined at the uh, on the eastern edge. Yeah, this fire here did get close to one ranch house and it damaged some equipment that was sitting out in the field. Um, but the firefighters were able to kind of intervene with the equipment so it, it didn't get to be extensive damage and the ranch house was saved from their efforts. So they did a wonderful job. And Shoemaker says crews will remain on scene overnight to make sure that none of the hot spots uh, flare up again and the fire spread. Janelle? All right, thanks so much, David. Well, 28 large uncontained wildfires burning across the northern Rockies have com compromised air quality from one end of Montana to the other. The pharmacist at First Pharmacy says the top complaints are difficulty breathing and dry eyes. Now, to help, some people are turning to masks to filter out the smoke. The Department of Health and Human Services says an N95 mask offers some protection. Now, according to the health department, smoke from wildfires is a mixture of gases and fine particles from burning trees and other plant materials. It also states that smoke and particulate matter can irritate eyes or your respiratory system, and it can irritate heart and lung diseases. One Billings woman tells us without the mask, she wasn't going outside. I couldn't go out of my house. I couldn't go feed my birds or anything because they, I could taste the smoke in the air. And, and I couldn't see but about eight blocks from my house. Once I got this, by then I was able to do pretty much whatever I would want to within reason. The masks help take out particulate um, particles in the air, help prevent the smoke from going into the lungs. Obviously the best thing to do if the smoke is a problem is to stay inside with the windows closed and turn the air conditioner on. Now, Hertha Boris says the masks do make it a little more difficult to breathe, so she recommends checking with a doctor if you have serious heart or lung disease. The Department of Public Health and Human Services says it's best to stay indoors, and drinking water may also help. Almost one week after its initial landfall, Harvey continues to devastate Texas and prompt new concerns. Floodwaters have started to recede in many areas, but searches, rescues, and unexpected after effects mean the emergency is far from over. The death toll now at least 39. Karen Kafa reports. Helicopters canvassing the Beaumont, Texas area Thursday for those in need of rescue. Just so we can see them and any obstacles on the other side. While dramatic efforts continued among clear skies, dire situations on the ground. Beaumont's water pumps failed, leaving the city without running water, which prompted this hospital evacuation. We did not expect that, and that's a game changer for us. And left residents waiting in line for a basic necessity. In Crosby, this is a scary sight. Rising temperatures caused organic peroxides to overheat at this chemical plant without power since Sunday. And in Houston, door-to-door -door searches for victims as others grapple with grim news. Rick Saldivar lost multiple family members when this van was swept away. My neighbors came over and gave me a hug and said they were so sorry. Whatever you need, you know, everybody, just whatever you need. You know, I, I guess they can't imagine 
going through something like this. Vice President Mike Pence arrived in Corpus Christi and headed to hard-hit Rockport with Trump cabinet members whose agencies will be involved in the long recovery. We are here today, we will be here tomorrow, and we will be here every day until this city and this state and this region rebuild bigger and better than ever before. Meanwhile, the U.S. military has deployed more than 6,000 active duty troops to help with the response, with an additional 1,100 prepared to deploy. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. In the wake of Hurricane Harvey, people all across the country are doing what they can to help out. Now, for some, that's a donation. For others, it's answering a call for service. Here in Billings, that giving spirit is heading to Texas in both forms. Q2 Samantha Harrelson spoke with one Billings woman today who is on her way. Sammy. Janelle, that's right. In times like these, people come together and lend a helping hand to those who need it most. Marilee Cole, a nurse in the Billings Clinic NICU, is on her way to Houston as hospital staffers enters days without any relief. While much of Houston remains underwater, many nurses just cannot leave the hospital, and many of those who could relieve them simply cannot get there. Cole made the decision after seeing a plea for NICU nurses. She flew out of Billings this afternoon to meet 25 other nurses from around the country, all heading to the area to do what they can. The thought of other nurses working, you know, really long hours. I've done it before, nothing like they have, but um, I can only imagine the stress that they're under and to know that they need help and that I have help to offer. Um, if it worked out for me and my family so easily, I just felt like I had no choice but to go and help. Cole says the 25 nurses will meet in Austin where they'll be picked up by the National Guard and taken into Houston. She'll be there for two weeks and the nurses will be staying in patient rooms at the hospital and are asked to work as many hours as they're able. Janelle? All right, thanks so much, Sammy. Well, here at Q2 and at all of our MTN stations across the state, we're joining forces with our parent company, Cordelilla Cordell, Cordillera Communications. Now, the campaign is called Give to the Gulf. All money raised will go to the Coastal Bend Disaster Recovery Group, which serves seven of the hardest hit counties along the Gulf. This, to speed up donations and relief efforts, MTN stations and our parent company will match up to $50,000. You can visit the KTVQ website or Facebook page to find a link to donate. Here at home, thousands of Montanans are also in the midst of disaster issues as fires burn up our state. The American Red Cross is stepping up to help in local communities. Right now, it has one shelter in Missoula serving hundreds of families evacuated or displaced from their homes. Several other American Red Cross shelters are on standby if needed. If you'd like to specifically help Montanans, you can give to the American Red Cross and designate Montana Wildlife Relief Fund. Turning to weather, we are at the end of another month, Bob, and this one just entirely too dry. Yeah, it's one of those things where you, you can't believe, with, especially with all the smoke we've had recently, you think, well, maybe this is a pretty warmer than normal and, and w w drier than normal one, and that's not entirely true. Let me show you. Take a look at the graphics here. Uh, as you can see, the average high temperature in August was uh, 84.9 degrees in Billings. That, uh, that's actually about, about a degree cooler than normal. Turned out to be the coldest 40th tied for... 40th coldest August on record here in the Billings area. Meanwhile, the uh, reported average low was 57.1. That also a little bit lower than normal, but not much. And as you can see here, as far as average wind speed, that was about eight miles per hour, about one mile per hour lower, slower than normal. And finally, look at this one. Precipitation, we wound up with 17 hundredths of an inch, a little more than half an inch behind normal. Turned out to be the 10th driest, tied for 10th driest precipitation totals for the month of August ever since records were kept. Do you know? All right, thanks so much, Bob. In other news tonight, settlement talks now underway in Washington state in a utility rate case related to Montana's coal strip power plants. Now, the case is a requested electric rate increase in Washington by Puget Sound Energy, or PSE. The company is a partial owner of the coal-fired power plants in eastern Montana. Now, sources close to the talks tell MTN News the proposed settlement will include language on paying for future costs from the eventual shutdown of coal strip plants one and two. Attorney General Tim Fox's office chose not to file expert testimony in the case by a deadline last month and had some testimony stricken from the case this week. But spokesman Eric Sell says the office is still involved with the case and is confident Montana's interests will be addressed. 
believe PSC wants to be a responsible company and, and uh, meet their legal obligations under Montana law and federal law to cover these cleanup costs. Uh, we just want to be there to ensure that they are preparing responsibly, responsibly for that to happen. Now, the proposed rate case settlement is expected to be filed in Washington State within two weeks. Coal strip plants one and two are scheduled to close by 2022. The long vacant Hastings building on Grand Avenue will soon have a colorful new resident. The owners of Ganan's Flower Shop announced tonight they will close their downtown and Billings West End stores at the end of this year and move into the vacant former Hastings spot at West Park Promenade. Ganan's plans to open into the new space in January 2018. The Ganan shops on North 30th Street and on 24th Street West will close in December. The Ganans Garden Center and retail operations in the Billings Heights will remain open. Ganans has been locally owned and operated in Billings since 1951. Up next on your Q2 10 o'clock news, the psychological effects of going through a disaster are countless. We'll take a look at Hurricane Harvey's potential impact in tonight's Health Watch. And later in sports, a wild football finish tonight between West and Bozeman. Scott shows us how it ends. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen.